Although carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels is the principal cause of global warming, methane has many times carbon's warming power. The odorless and visible gas is thought to be responsible for about a quarter of the increase in global temperatures caused by humans. Almost one third of the warming expected in the next few decades could be avoided by reducing human caused methane emissions without actually having to invent new technology or cut consumption. That's according to IOP Science. Some of that would come from cleaning up methane sources like landfills and cattle feedlots, but oil and gas fields, they are arguably the most obvious places to start because they offer the biggest potential reductions at the cheapest cost. Zach Miter writes about this in his latest Bloomberg Businessweek article. It's also today's Big Take, the very best of Bloomberg's in-depth original reporting from around the globe. And for this piece, he profiles methane hunters who are racing to change the course of global warming. Zach, the urgency of the methane problem has only come into focus in the past few years. What is it that's triggering the conversation right now? I think there's basically two things. One is that um, just over the past 10 years, we've become a lot more aware of how much natural gas is leaking out of the supply chain. When people drill for gas and so they can burn it in a power plant, uh, it, there's a long way for it to travel between the well and the power plant. And if a, just a little bit leaks out, that can cause a big impact on global warming. The other thing that's changed is that we're starting to see the real world impacts of global warming happening today. And so that's caused a lot of policymakers to get more focused on the short term drivers of, of warming over the next 20 years rather than the next 100 years, as we were talking about back in the 80s. And methane is much more powerful short term uh, contributor to global warming rather than long term. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Take us into the science here about the differences between carbon dioxide and methane. Right. So methane is just much better at trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere than carbon is. Way better. But after about 10 years, it kind of dissipates. It, it, it becomes other chemicals in the atmosphere, so it goes away. Carbon hangs around a really long time. And so um, if you could do something to reduce the amount of methane emissions, you could actually have an impact uh, on the climate in just 20 years, you would see a noticeable difference. How is this all playing out in the Permian Basin, the area, the focus for your story, where you spent some time? Right. Yeah, so it's the biggest oil field in the U.S., and it is just there's just a tremendous amount of energy being produced. Texas there. and New Mexico, right? That's, that's right, the southwest. So, so how's it playing out with these methane hunters who you profile? Right, so I went around. There's there are people who are going around to just try to get their, their hands around how much methane is actually leaking out of the oil and gas supply chain. And it's kind of hard to tell because it's invisible and odorless. And traditionally, companies thought it wasn't a big problem because, like, you know, they, they sell natural gas, so why would they want to let it leak out? But it turns out that if you, if you, um, if you go around the oil fields with this powerful $100,000 camera, you can see the methane leaking out of pipes and valves and in different places. And so just over the past few years, people have, have sort of realized what a big problem this is.